This is Mrs. Wainer's math class, chapter 4, lesson 1. Multiply by powers of 10 that are greater than 1 or less than 1. Today's learning target, by the end of the lesson, you should confidently be able to say, I can use patterns with powers of 10 numbers to help place the decimal point in the product. As a review, powers of 10 are numbers with a 1 and zeros. Some of them are greater than 1 and others are less than 1. Powers of 10 that are greater than 1 are whole numbers, like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and base 10 numbers, numbers where the base is 10 and there's an exponent, like 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power, 10 to the third power, or 10 to the fourth power. So whole numbers and base 10 numbers with exponents are greater than 1. Some powers of 10 are less than 1. Decimals and fractions are powers with powers of 10 are less than 1. So decimals like 0 and 1 tenth, 0 and 1 hundredth, 0 and 1 thousandth, or 0 and 1 ten thousandth would be decimals that are less than 1. Fractions are less than 1. Fractions that have the numerator of 1 and the denominator as a power of 10 are fractions that are less than 1, like 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, 1 thousandth, or 1 ten thousandth. When you multiply by a power of 10 that is greater than 1, the R is in greater. Reminder that you'll have to move your decimal to the right. So greater means move your decimal to the right. And the number of zeros in the value tell you how many places to move that decimal. Let's look at some examples. Example number 1 says 0 and 95 hundredths times 10,000. I see a power of 10. On the right-hand side, 10,000 has a 1 with zeros. That's my power of 10. So I'm going to write down the number that's not the power of 10. So I'll write 0, decimal, 9, 5. I'll look at my power of 10 number, which is 10,000. That's a whole number, so it's greater than 1. And greater means I move my decimal to the right. So I'll put an R and an arrow pointing right. How many places? Well, that depends on the number of zeros I have, so, so let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to need to move my decimal to the right four places. I go down to the number that I just rewrote, I cross up my decimal, and let's move it to the right. 1, 2, I have to put a place value 0 to move it 3, and another place value 0 to move it 4. So I've moved my decimals four places. So now I'm going to rewrite what I have, which is 0, nine five zero zero decimal and are there any unnecessary zeros well in a whole number beginning zeros are unnecessary so I can get rid of that zero so therefore my answer would be nine five zero zero nine thousand five hundred or I can write it as nine thousand five hundred with a decimal at the end the decimal at the end of a number, if there's no digits after it, is optional. That's your choice. Either way would be correct. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number one right now. Example number two says six and three hundred eighty-five thousandths times ten to the first power. I see my base ten number it is my power of ten. It's a ten with an exponent. And ten to the first power, well, what does that exponent say? Say it with me. It says base. Oh, base. You need to show yourself to the fifth graders one time because the exponent is a one. So if I show 10 one time, what does it look like? It looks like 10. And if I wanted to do it the short way, I would say write down the one and the exponent tells me how many zeros to place in my answer. So I have a one with one zero that equals 10. And we said base 10 numbers with exponents are going to be greater than 1. If the exponent is 1 or more, it will be greater than 1. And 10 has 1, 0. So that means I'm going to move my decimal. Since it's greater, I'll move my decimal to the right. 1 place, since there's 1, 0 in the number 10. Notice that the exponent is the same as the number of places that I should move my decimal. So if I have a base 10 number with an exponent, the exponent tells me how many places to move the decimal. 
since that's the same as the number of zeros. So let's take the number that's not the base 10 number and write it down, 6 decimal 3, 8, 5. I know I'm going to move my decimal one place to the right. So I cross it out, I move it one place to the right, and there it is now. So what's my answer? 6, 3, decimal 8, 5. 63 and 85 hundredths is my final answer for number 2. Okay, let's take a look at number 3. 0 and 84 hundredths times 10 to the third power. So I know that 10 to the third power is my base 10 number. So I'm going to take the other number and write it down. 0, decimal, 8, 4. 10 to the third is a base 10 number, so I know that's greater than 1. Greater means I move my decimal to the right. My exponent is 3, so I'll be moving my decimal to the right three places. Okay, let's do it. Cross out the decimal. I'll move it 1, 2, add a place value 0, three places, and there it is. So my answer will be 0, 8, 4, 0, decimal. But are there any unnecessary zeros that I can get rid of? Well, in a whole number, beginning zeros are unnecessary. So I can get rid of that zero, making my final answer 840, or I can write it as 840 with the decimal at the end. Remember, if the last thing on my number is a decimal, so it's a whole number with a decimal, the ending decimal is optional. Let's take a look at example number four. Number four has a very large decimal. It's 12.40536 times 10 to the fourth. How do I read that? 12 and 40,536 hundred thousandths times 10 to the 4th power. Okay, I know that 10 to the 4th power is my base 10 number, and it's greater than 1. I'm going to write down the other number. So I'll write down 1, 2, decimal, 4, 0, 5, 3, 6. My 10 to the 4th is greater than 1. That means I move it to the right, and my um, exponent is 4, so I'll be moving the decimal to the right 4 places. Let's cross out that decimal. Let's move it one, two, three, four places. There's the new decimal. So we'll write down what our answer is now, which is one, two, four, zero, five, three, decimal six. Now, we need to put commas in this whole number. When you want to put commas in a whole number, you first find the decimal. That's where you start counting by threes for the commas. So I'll count one, two, three, and put that comma in. One, two, three, and no comma. With, you wouldn't start a number with a comma, so this number gets one comma. So let's rewrite the number as one, two, four, comma, zero, five, three, decimal, six. That's 124,053 and six tenths. Please stop the video and complete worksheet numbers two through four right now. So when you multiply by a power of 10 that's greater than one, the r's in greater remind you that you'll move your decimal to the right. But when you multiply by a power of 10 that is less than one, the l and less reminds you to move your decimal to the left. And again, the number of zeros in the value tell me how many places to move that decimal. Let's take a look at some examples. Example number five says 2,934,857 times zero and one thousandth. Well, I automatically see that base 10 number, the zeros and the ones, which is my decimal on the right, zero and one thousandth. So I'm going to write down the other number to get ready to move my decimal. Remember, when I recopy the other number, I do not copy commas. I do copy the decimal, but no commas. So I'm going to write 2, 9, 3, 4, 8, 5, 7. But I need to move my decimal, and I don't see a decimal. So what do I do? That's right, I remove the invisibility cloak, and where is the decimal? It's always at the end when I have to remove the invisibility cloak. 
So I copied the other number and I look back at my base 10 number and I see that that is a decimal number. And I know that decimals are less than 1. Less tells me to move my decimal to the left. There are 1, 2, 3 zeros, so I'll be moving my decimal 3 places to the left. Cross out the decimal, I'll move it 1, 2, 3 places to the left, and that's where it goes. So I'm going to copy down what I have, which is 2, 9, 3, 4, decimal, 8, 5, 7. Now I need to put commas in here, so I'm going to find that decimal and move 1, 2, 3 places to the left. That's where my comma goes. So my final answer is a 2, comma, 9, 3, 4, decimal, 8, 5, 7, which is 2,934 and 857 thousandths. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 5 right now. Let's take a look at example number 6. 53 and 204 thousandths times 1 one thousandth. Well, I see that my fraction is a base 10 power of 10 number because it has 1 and zeros on the denominator on the bottom and simply a 1 as the numerator on top. So I'm going to write down the number that's not the power of 10, which is the 5, 3, decimal, 2, 0, 4. Remember, we do copy decimals. We do not copy commas. My 1 1,000th is my base 10 number that is less than 1. Less means I move my decimal to the left. There are 1, 2, 3 zeros, so I'll move my decimal to the left three places. Cross out the decimal. I'm going to move it 1, 2, add a place value 0, so I can move it that third place. So I'm going to copy down what I have, which is decimal 0, 5, 3, 2, 0, 4. But you know Mrs. Wainwright's rule, don't start a number with a decimal, so I'll put a place value 0 in front of that decimal. So my final answer is, if I was reading it, it would be 0 and 53,204 millionths. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 6 right now. In this lesson, you'll see problems like example number 7. And example number 7 is not a difficult problem. It's just many small, simple problems. So in this case, it's five separate problems. But we can do this. So I see 10 to the 0 power times 20 equals blank is my first problem. And what does that mean? Well, if I have 10 to the 0 power, that means I'm going to write the number 1 with no zeros. So 10 to the 0 power is just simply 1, because there's zero zeros in it. And 1, well, here's what I think when I see a number 1. I think I love to multiply by 1, because anything times 1 equals itself. So 1 times 20 is going to equal 20. Therefore, 10 to the 0 power times 20 equals 20, because 10 to the 0 power really means 1. Okay, let's take a look at our next problem, 10 to the first power times 20. Well, I have 10 to the first power, and I know that any base 10 number that's a base of 10 with an exponent is greater than 1. Greater means I move my decimal to the right. My exponent tells me how many places, and it says 1, so I'll have to move my decimal one place to the right. So I write down my other number, which is 20, remove the invisibility cloak, and I'm going to move it one place to the right. Cross it out, put a place value 0 so I can move it one place to the right, so 10 to the first times 20 equals 200. Our next problem, 10 to the second power times 20. Well, 10 to the second power, this is greater than 1, means I'm moving my decimal to the right. The 2 tells me I'll be moving it two places to the right. Write down the other number, which is the 20. Remove the invisibility cloak, and let's put a place value 0 so we can move it one place, and another one so we can move it two places to the right. So 10 to the second power times 20 equals 2,000. 10 to the third power times 20, well, this is going to be greater than 1, which means I move my decimal to the right. Exponent tells me to move it three places to the right. Take my 20, remove the invisibility cloak, and I'll add place value zeros to be able to move it 1, 2, 3 places to the right. So my answer is 20,000. 1, 2, 3, put a comma. 
10 to the third power times 20 is 20,000. And last but not least, I have 10 to the fourth power times 20. 10 to the fourth power I know is greater than 1, so my decimal will move to the right four places because my exponent is a 4. Write down the 20, remove the invisibility cloak, cross out the decimal, and let's move it four places. I have to put some place value zeros to do so. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 10 to the fourth power is 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So let's count for commas. 1, 2, 3, comma. So 10 to the fourth power times 20 equals 200,000. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 7 right now. So let's review powers of 10 that are greater than 1 are whole numbers like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, or base 10 numbers, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth. Powers of 10 that are less than 1 are decimal numbers and fractions. When you multiply by a power of 10 that's greater than 1, you move the decimal to the right. The number of zeros in the value tells you that how many places to move the decimal. When you multiply by a power of 10 that's less than 1, you move the decimal to the left. The number of zeros in the value tell you, me, tell you how many places to move your decimal. As we reminded ourselves in example number 1, sometimes you need to add place value zeros to be able to move that decimal, and sometimes you can get rid of unnecessary zeros in your final answer. Remember that exponents are greater than 1, and your exponent will tell you how many places to move your decimal. Remember, when you have an answer that has a decimal number in it and you need to put commas in, you start at the decimal to count three places to the left for each comma. When you see a problem like this, it's really just smaller separate problems. Do remember, as we learned in this problem, that 10 to the 0 power equals 1. So hopefully now you can confidently say, I can use patterns with powers of 10 numbers to help place the decimal point in the product. Those patterns would be greater, means you move it to the right, the number of zeros, or less than means you move it to the left, the number of zeros. Good luck with this lesson.